Hi, I'm Rudra Chaudhary, uh, Director of Carnegie India. And uh, it's a great pleasure to be um, here with you at ANI. Um, I'm one of the key conveners of this Global Technology Summit that we're very proud to co-host with the Ministry of External Affairs. It's also a formal pre-summit event of the Ministry of Electronics and the AI Global AI Summit, uh, which will be coming up in 19th and 20th of February, which everybody here is very excited by. Uh, we've got a huge number of people who've come specifically from the Global South. This entire workshop is to discuss challenges and opportunities of AI and how AI actually touches people and what are the roadblocks that we need to unlock. And we have people from 25 different countries, from Ghana and Nigeria to the Pacific Islands to Latin America. And my hope is that a lot of the learnings from these workshops will feed into the working groups. There are seven working groups of the AI Summit and hopefully we'll be able to shape some of the deliverables because this is really the views from here are coming from the Global South. And as our Honorable Prime Minister has made clear that one of the key features of this summit and the, one of the main reasons as to why India is hosting it is to be a genuine voice for the Global South. So we are talking about AI and there are lots of, you know, uh, conversations and talks about, you know, the regulation part of AI. They are requesting or there are some panels who are requesting the government to bring some regulations. regulations. Look, regulations are obviously important in AI, but I think the general view that the Indian government has taken and now there's some language that has been published by the METI which gives some guidelines in terms of where India is, is essentially to say is that, look, India is pro-innovation. I don't think it wants to regulate AI as the innovation curve is developing, but obviously, like any government, there will be some degree of regulation on AI, whether you do it sectorally, whether you do it horizontally, I think that is to be seen. But our general sense is the basic, the clarion call is for adoption, it's impact. And that's why this global summit in India is called the Impact Summit. It's the India AI Impact Summit, and I think that means a lot. Okay, if you talk about the AI, so maybe tell me what, what role AI is playing in our uh, India's very ambitious uh, semiconductor mission, and also in the sector yeah. of satellite communication. See, semiconductor mission is very important. Um, you know, we got started about three, four years ago. Uh, there were a lot of naysayers. People weren't sure could India pull it off. But India today has, you know, more than 10 projects online on semiconductors from manufacturing, fab, to assembly, to testing. But that's one part of the story. But I think the story that's emerging from the AI summit process and the working group meetings that are leading up to that process is what's, in, what's the focal point of India and the Global South is how does AI change the life of people, right? So a lot of the discussion in the US and China is about super intelligence. And when we reach super intelligence, it'll have some downstream effects and it'll change our lives. Fair enough, that's a bet everyone's making on it. And that may, may not work, we'll see. But I think the view from, you know, even this entire workshop is that AI is already helping to change the life of a farmer. Today you have in India, for instance, a use case where 16 million farmers are getting information because of AI on crops, on what seeds to sow. When is the right time to do it? in 19, 20 different languages. That is the actual impact of AI on people. Similarly, there are several other use cases in health, in education. And I think that's what this entire summit in February is all about, is how does AI change the life of people? What do we need to unlock? And how do we democratize AI resources so everybody can benefit from it? talking about this February event. Yeah. So what's the preparedness? Because people are very excited about it. I talk to everybody and they are showing their use enthusiasm. Look, clearly, as we understand it, this is a major goal of the government. I think it's a really big deal that we are the first Global South country to host the AI Summit, and it's India. It's no other Global South country. And I think a lot of that has to do with the support that we have of the Global South, um, whether bilaterally, minilaterally, through large institutions like the UN, etc., it's very clear that people do look to India. And they will look to India to create something out of the summit. And I'm quite sure that the working groups will work towards deliverables, um, which will have an effect long after this summit, and hopefully into the next one, wherever that is. Last question. Uh, where do you see India standing in its uh, AI role in the global summit? As I said, you know, for us, it's not, it's not calculating the number of chips that we have. And we have a long way to go on the semiconductor mission and things, right? That's a resilience game. It'll take time. 
But I think the, if, if you look at what we've done with AI adoption, if you look at what we've actually done for AI for people already, you know, this, this morning we had a presentation on, um, you know, on how AI is transforming our court systems, you know, adalats. How is AI transferring the life of teachers? And that adoption level where you can get the tech down to a person's life, right? And in our court system, that's critical. If we can speed the, 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 the link chain between old files in an office which are digitized, which then use AI and multimodal and multilingual models in order to create that from English to different languages, right? We're actually saving the lives of people in under tribe. We're actually giving respect and dignity back to those who have been put in these kind of circumstances. So I think my sense is that the focus is, or the blue dot is on the citizen, is the individual. And that's where a lot of the focus of the summit is. Uh, so there's one more question, that America is kind of doing something with the export of chips. Uh, there's some recent tweet. No, so there is an export. Uh, every country will have some kind of an export control barrier when it comes to yeah. chips. Towards the teeth end of the Biden administration, they introduced something called a diffusion rule that had different categories of countries who will have to qualify in different ways to access those chips. Um, and we were very upset because we were not in the top category um, in that rule. Um, luckily, that rule has been killed. And the current Trump administration, I believe, is looking at a different framework for export controls. We have to wait and see what this is. But my own sense is, given the massive investments that have been made in India, Satya Nadella announced day before yesterday that Microsoft is doing 17.5 billion. Amazon announced they're doing 35 billion. Google announced they're doing 15 billion. How are you going to create those data centers and get those chips if you don't uh, create an export control roadmap? So my sense is that I'm hopeful that it'll be a pragmatic export control framework that, will, uh, that may benefit us as the next builder of data centers.